April 12th, 2024. I'm Kimberly from Fat Quarter Shop and we're gonna have Sew With Me today. And for Sew With Me, it's gonna be a little bit impromptu because I missed a little step. So we're gonna add that to the tutorial, which I think will be super fun. After that, we're gonna go into details on sew alongs. I wasn't really planning on doing that, but we got so many questions last week that I, I, Denise wrote down all the information that all of you guys were asking for so that we have that in one place for you to know where all that information is. And then I'm going to show you all the what's new stuff. One thing I'm particularly really excited about. So we're going to jump into the, the sew with me. So we have the quilt kit. It's called Mercantile Sampler Quilt Along. And the quilt kit has the sew guide. But for the pattern, you actually need to go to Lori Holt's blog, which is beinmybonnet.blogspot.co. Now, this is, an, this is the sheet that comes with your quilt kit. So if you buy your quilt kit from Fat Quarter Shop, this is going to be on there. Um, Nova did this for us. So let me kind of show you the applique that we're going to be doing today and the difference in these two printouts that are in your kit. If you didn't buy a kit from us, you can purchase, you can download these for free at Riley Blake's website. So this first one has the schedule and you can see that we're already supposed to be on April 12th. I'm already supposed to already be done with all these blocks, but I wanted to do a tutorial. This is when we could fit it in. So I'm behind and that's okay. This gives you everything you need to know and more information on what you cut per block. Now you can see I made notes as I made my blocks. So that's your first download. Now your second one is the information on each block. And we're gonna talk about each block and I'm gonna do this block, just the applique part. So the way I broke up my, my sew along is I did it differently. I made all of my blocks, so I'm gonna show them all to you. And then on the back, Teresa labeled them for me. So I'm just gonna show you all my blocks. Now, these blocks do not have the outside border, which is the glitch and the matrix for this morning that I'm gonna show you how I fix. But basically, I made all the blocks in, I think, a day or two. And my goal is to finish a quilt as fast as I can so I can make more quilts. I know some of you say, oh, you should enjoy the process. Oh, I enjoy the process, but I enjoy the process so much that I just wanna make more and more quilts. So that's kind of why I go fast. So basically my first step was to make all the blocks. My second step is to add all the borders around the block, which is what I forgot to do. And we're gonna do that here and it'll show you kind of, I'll show you a trick on how to do it a little bit faster. And then my third step is going to be doing all the circles. My other step is going to be to do all my four patches, which I've already done. And uh, Emma actually did all the four patches. I'm going to try to find a picture on my phone to show you, but Emma sewed all the four patches together. So those are done. So I am going in a little bit of a different order and that's okay. So these are all the blocks. And as far as I remember, I didn't make any changes to these blocks in terms of fabric placement. I just did exactly what Lori did. So my blocks, I love my blocks. And I love my blocks as they are, but they can't go into a quilt because you can see she made them all different sizes. Because once you applique them down on a circle and when you put them um, on point, they all look beautiful. So I'm going to move these and they're, they have the names on the back so I can easily find them and put the bigger ones at the bottom. And then we're going to start with today's. And you can kind of see like some, I might've done all the blues together at one time. I can't really remember what I did. I just know that I mass sewed all of this because that's kind of. Okay, so you take this and 
you need to add these outside borders. Then we're going to applique that down. Let me show you the supplies that Lori uses. No, there's one of her. It's her spangled. It's okay. okay. You can show that one too. Okay, so I'm going to show you what she did. This is Lori's pattern. So she used her sew-in interfacing these new big 14-inch pre-cuts. So you pretty much have to use this. You have to have this. It won't work without it. And you do have to have the 12-inch circle ruler. So these are what you have to have. We're going to be using those. Um, I'm going to be using this point, clover point, what do you think this is called? Point turner, I think. I don't know exactly what this one is called, but I'm going to use this. I'm going to use Bowen applique needles, applique pins, and I'm going to talk when we get to the applique pins about why I'm doing it. And then this is the glue that Lori used. I'm not going to be using glue. Now, I'm going to show you right now why I'm not using glue. It's because Kimberly Jolly cannot be trusted with glue. This is what happens when I put glue. It, you can see the glue, because I kind of went a little glue crazy. So, I decided, because I was gonna do all these at one time, and I was like, um, I need to not, um, I need to not do it this way. I need to find a different way. So I went ahead and I did all of my four patches. In fact, I didn't do all the four patches. Emma Jolly did them. So she sewed them all together and I ironed. And what's great about this is the points don't have to match because you are covering them up. So it doesn't matter. So all of these are in order of the pattern. So even though I'm behind on the sew along, in a way, I am ahead because I have all the blocks and all the four patches done. Now, when I did these, I think I made them about an inch bigger when I cut my squares. I always do everything just a little bit bigger. So these are my four patches. Okay, now we have a couple glitches in the matrixes today, which means mistakes. That's what I call them. The first thing is, this is a mistake because of all this glue. Now, I'm not going to throw this away, but I am going to use this to test stitches, and I'll show you that in a little bit. Now, this one Emma did, and when I put it, when I pinned it back together, obviously these two fabrics are reversed. No big deal. I'm still going to use it. That's the second glitch. The third glitch is I forgot to add this so that we can do the circle. So literally 10 minutes ago, I found fabric and I starched it. We're going to go to the ironing table and I'm going to show you a trick on how to get starch to dry fast. So I got this from the warehouse and I don't want to get a bunch of starch on my cover. So, I starched this piece. I used this starch. We don't sell it, but this is what I use. And it's 100% saturated. Now, you can either use a blow dryer, but I need this to start. I need this to dry. And if you take your iron and you start putting it on here, you're going to get brown spots because starch has brown in it. I'm going to take this iron it's got steam and I'm gonna put the steam right on top, but I'm not gonna to touch my fabric. I'm just gonna steam it. Okay, it's gonna be hard for me to talk over this because it's really loud. Now I'm gonna do the other side. Now the glue, the reason I'm not using the glue is I just can't be trusted to not put too much glue.
Okay, now that it's starting to dry, I'm gonna move this piece off. And I'm gonna just keep doing this. It's gonna take a while. So there's Emma doing, she's doing different blocks, but that's her sewing for me. Okay, so now it's still a little bit wet and I need to get it a little bit hotter. At this point at home, I would be using a blow dryer, but obviously at work, we don't have a blow dryer. But if you put this iron right on this, it is going to give you black spots. So I'm gonna take this. Now, I normally at home would just use a white fabric so I don't ruin fabric, but obviously we're winging it today. So I'm gonna put this on top and I'm gonna iron on top. And um, you can hang this up and do it with a fan and you can dry it. And that's what I normally do. This is not what I normally do. This is called Kimberly needs to improvise because she's made a lot of mistakes this morning. And sometimes we have to do things on the fly. And this happens sometimes at home where I have to figure out a way to get things dry. Normally, I just, um, is one of my boys gonna help when Emma leaves for college? Uh, maybe if they're home okay so it's still not dry it's getting close it's getting real close watching fabric dry that's funny Well, Emma, I don't think she has a sewing bug yet. She has the I want money bug. And the I want money bug means you gotta work in my house. So she'll say, what can I sew? What can I, she hasn't, I haven't taught her how to starch. Okay, it's dry. Nice and dry. Now, it's a little bit wet, but it's okay. So now I'm gonna show you what I'm going to do when I do all of these blocks because I am not gonna cut this two and a half by nine and a quarter and two and a half by 13 and a quarter. I'm not doing that because you don't need this to be exact because the next step is a circle. So what I'm going to do I'm going to see how many inches I did. Okay, so I'm gonna do two and three quarters. I always just cut everything bigger. It's just what I do. It's just kind of part of the Kimberly method. I would say it's foolproof, but obviously coming to work today, we know it's not because I just, <laughs> So basically I'm saving myself time by not cutting down. I'm cutting this bigger and I'm also not cutting down these rectangles to these sizes. Then I'm gonna take this. It really doesn't matter which side you add it to, but I am gonna try to do, I'm trying to match her pattern. So I'm just gonna put this right sides together. And obviously I didn't need I don't need as long of, of a piece, but I'm gonna pin these. Even though this is longer, I am gonna pin it.
So your tutorial will just be a little bit longer, but hopefully that'll help you if you're ever in a bind or a pinch at home. I, um, blow dry works best though. And here I'm going to sew these with a quarter inch seam and I'm going to sew with the seams down and the flat side up. That's great. Okay, my bobbin is, oh, it's unthreaded. Okay, we're doing, this is the day, let me tell you guys. This is the Kimberly day of everything's gonna be messed up and that's quite all right. We're just gonna go with it. The funny thing is, I actually checked to make sure it was threaded before I started and usually don't check, so that means I'm way off. Okay. Put this back. When I'm cutting something wider, I still use the ruler. I don't use the mat. You could. I don't trust myself to do that. I'm so used to using the ruler. And this is how I do a lot of my blocks. I usually don't measure. I usually just do this because it's just easier. Now, I am going to press open. And the reason why, you're going to see when we start doing the applique why it makes it better. Okay, so we're going to... Press this. I call it Murphy's Law of Quilting. Everything that can go wrong will go wrong. Yes, I, I find that either my day either goes perfect or it goes a mess. And I think today's gonna go a mess because I've already, one of my sons is going to UIL this morning. And so, you know, like I wanna know how he's doing. So I've already texted him and he said, mom, my phone's about to die. And I was like, um, it's like 7.30 in the morning and your phone should be charged. And of course, typical excuse, Peyton moved the charger. We have like 50 chargers in the house, including some hidden in Kevin's desk. Everybody knows where they are, but it's Peyton's fault, right? Like that's just the typical, typical thing. Okay, here I'm gonna pin these. My dog did the thing, heard the sewing machine, looked at mine, and looked at me puzzled. That's so funny. My dog does not like my new Laura Star iron. He will not. He will sit in my room a little bit, but he will not sit where he used to. He has a little couch. It's the piggy couch, and um, he won't sit on it anymore. He sits by the door, so I might have to move the couch, or he just does not like the sound of it. And this is a Laura Star iron. I started using it last year. Um, Ashley can link to the one that I'm using, but it's really expensive, but I can tell you it is so amazing. And so um, hopefully when I'm sewing, I don't flip over any seams. comes in when 
Kimberly's on. Oh, Piggy, is he better? Well, his behavior is the same, but he did go to daycare today, but um, hopefully that other dog doesn't go because I don't need them calling me. That's fun. Piggy doesn't like your iron. My kitten hissed at it. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't like the noise, and he usually sleeps. I mean, he's a pug. He's like a... He likes to sleep, so I think that the iron makes him not be able to sleep. And he knows if he's in my bed or in the living room, there's no, um, there's no noise. You are delightful and all is okay. Those little hiccups are fine. But yeah, I'm so embarrassed, but. Now here, I wanna make sure this is nice and flat. Okay, so now the fun thing is, I don't have to trim this down because of what we're gonna do next. So I'm gonna set this aside. I'm gonna take the 12 inch ruler. I'm gonna take one of these pieces out. And I can give you a little hint. Lori uses this interfacing to do a table runner in her brand new book. Um, and uh, it's gonna be so cute. It's gonna go into my scrappy rotation. So, to be clear, this is Lori's uh, method, and I've watched her video. If, if you just search Lori Holt Mercantile Sampler, I'm following what she did and making a couple changes. So she used this interfacing in her Prairie Home Book that is coming out, and um, I can't tell you what it does yet, but it is so cute. It's like the best thing ever, and so I can't wait to make one. Okay, so first you draw your circle. I'm using a friction pin. It will disappear with heat, so you have to be careful. You can not iron it before you sew it. So that's number one tip. Then you need to draw these little lines so you know where your centers are. And then take your ruler, or just a flat ruler, and connect these lines. Okay, then you're going to take this, I'm not going to cut anything off. I'm not going to trim anything, I'm going to leave it just like this. Now what we want to do is we want to find the center of our block. So what I'm going to do is find the center. And I'm going to crease a little bit. I'm going to go this way. I'm gonna crease a little bit, and I'm actually probably, I'm probably not gonna be able to see that on camera because of the lights. So I'm actually going to do a little bit, let me see, let's see. Okay, that's about center. And then I want to really check to make sure it is the center. So I'm kind of just, it's a little bit off. Okay. So then what I want to do, match this center with this center. So I put my pin in the center and my pin here, make it stand up and go like this. Now you can see, I don't have to trim anything off because I'm gonna trim it off in the next step. And I'm just gonna kinda of look at this for a little bit, just to make sure I've really got it in the center because this is the most important part. It looks good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use regular pins. You can use the applique pins, but the applique pins that I have are for the next step. Now you could just go sew this. You wanna make sure your interfacing is on the right side of your block. Oh, I forgot one step. Let me do it real quick. Well, actually, nope, I'm gonna do it after. Now the key to this is to try to sew without poking yourself. I can tell you right now it's not gonna happen. The way today's going, I'm gonna poke myself like crazy, but I want to have a lot of pins because when you start sewing this, 
it's going to shift. So there's not much you can stop it from doing. There's, I mean, if that makes sense, it's not really easy to make it not shift. Now we're gonna sew right on that line. Okay, a couple tips. You don't want your stitch length to be too long because when you flip this out, your stitches will start showing. You don't want it to be too tight. So I usually stitch with a 1.5. I'm gonna go with like a 1.7, just slightly bigger than what you normally do. I'm not gonna cut this hole yet because if you cut this hole now, it's gonna distort your circle. So I'm also, what I want you to watch when I'm on that sewing machine, I'm gonna try to be very steady with the movement. I'm gonna go a little bit slower and you're gonna see my hand do this. That is how I'm going to move the fabric and that is how you get a circle to look really nice. Now, you can see my hand is going right on those pins. That's okay. I'm, um, that's just what I do. So I'm okay if I poke myself. So here you need a different foot, an open toe, and like I said, I'm just going to go a little bit bigger. It doesn't matter where you start and you stop, but you will need to cover your stitches when you get back around by about an inch just to have no, no loose ends. So I'm going to sew a little bit slower. And I'm not going to talk because I really want this to come out nice. The nicer your stitches and the more circular it is, the easier the next step is. If you have this real jaggedy, it's not gonna come out good when you flip it. So I'm not gonna talk, because I'm gonna try to do this correctly.
Take your pins out. Okay. Now what I wanna do is I wanna trim a quarter inch away from the outside. And I'm just gonna do that with long um, scissors. Is it hard for me to sl go slow? Yes. And I am going to um, just start trimming. I'm not going to try to answer questions because I don't wanna make a mistake. So if there's no talking, just sorry. I don't trust myself. I cannot talk and cut circles at the same time. I can cut and sew a quarter inch seam, but I'm not allowed a circle. And I am sitting down, just it's easier if you sit down to do this. And then um, you want to make sure you don't iron at this point because you don't want this to go away yet. And I'll explain that in a little bit. And long, um, long, sharp scissors really helps with this. I would definitely not do this with a rotary cutter. There's no way, because I would, I would, there's no way I could do it. And it, I think this quilt, the challenge will be me having to sew slow cut slow. This one's kind of a slower, but this is one where I could sew the circles, Emma could cut. Um, my boys did help with the blocks because one of them helped pull the paper off. I don't remember which one because they pull paper all the time and it depends. It's the money game is what we call it. Who wants money at the, at the Jolly House? That means whoever's going to pull. Now, this is going to be so OCD, but right here, these little clips, I'm going to clip them off. They're just a little bit extra fabric that I don't need there. And that's totally not necessary. It's just something I do. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to cut on this line so I can flip it out. But you don't want to go too big. If you go too big, you're going to lose the shape. So... Pull it apart carefully. Make sure your block is not anywhere near this. Cut a little bit. Cut a little bit. It doesn't have to be exactly, it's just somewhere in the center. Okay. Now I'm gonna flip the block out and I'm gonna to try to be careful. I, you know, oh, I'm gonna do a little bit longer. I did such a good job making my block so pretty on the front. I don't wanna just rip this and crunch it up and lose all of my um, pretty points. So I am gonna be a little bit more gentle. And then I'm just going to really try to make the crinkly part on this side, not this side, so I don't lose my points. And I'm just gonna pull this and just pull it out. Sorry, this is not going the way I wanted it to. Okay. Okay. Oh, that gives me anxiety. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my pinky finger and I'm going to run it all the way across the seam. And I'm gonna do it on the table because this is the way I do it at home. This is gonna be my first round at trying to get this flat. How does Emma feel about my patterns being named after her? Oh, she, I think she likes it. My sons are a little upset, but they weren't born when I started that, so. I think they're, they're, they're 
a little upset. That's okay. Okay, so see, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I don't know what it's called, it's a clover something. Clover two-point turner. Clover two-point turner per Jordan. Two-point? Okay, and then I'm going to, from the front, I'm going to put that point right there. And I'm trying to smooth it, and I'm trying to make it equal so that right here, the stitches are right in the center, not in the back, not in the front. This is a little bit hard to do on camera, just so you guys know, because I usually put this right in front of my face. So... So I'm just right on that line. And this is kind of really important because if you don't get this to be really nice and flat, when you stitch it down, it's gonna be ugly. Now I'm going to iron off the lines, and that's okay. And I will show you um, how to put the lines back on if needed. From the top, not the back, I'm gonna put it on the front. I'm gonna iron gently around the edge. Okay, now when you're looking at this, you should not see the background fabric from the back. You should not see the interfacing from the front. And that looks really nice. I'm actually really, really good with it. Now's the hard part. Okay, well ignore that these two fabrics are in the wrong spot. And this is going to go on point, so if that makes sense. So your block originally was like this. When you put it on here, you put it on point. So hopefully that makes sense. And then I'm going to eyeball this. I, you can see right here, that's the corner, that's the corner, that's the corner. So I'm going to just kind of put those where the center, and it's not gonna be perfect. So that looks really centered around, and I'm looking at the lines here and the lines here. And then here I am gonna do the applique pins. Now applique pins are shorter. This is a regular pin. They are about a little bit more than half the size and they're gonna really grab your fabric and keep it in place. And I'm gonna use a lot of pins, so I'll talk while I'm doing this, but I want, now what, if you watch Lori's tutorial, what she does is she puts glue all the way around the edge. That's great. Kimberly Jolly cannot be trusted with glue. I've already proven that to you guys. So I'm gonna pin but I'm not gonna be near the center because you don't wanna have to remove the pins as you go. And this is three layers, so it's gonna be a little bit harder, but the key is to keep it flat. I'm 
Mary says, this is great. Wish you would do this for all the sew alongs. We are always, you can always put suggestions of exactly what you want me to do. Now, if I do it, I can do it. There's some people who ask for things that I don't do, like I don't free motion quilt. I don't long arm quilt. There are certain things I don't do and I don't, I don't um, pretend to do them because I don't wanna make a fool of myself. And you can kind of see, it really grabs, because it's not long, it really just kind of grips it. I don't know how to explain it. But I very rarely use the applique pins. So at my house, even, they're in this little box just because I very rarely use them. So I don't have them on like a container or anything because I don't use them enough to justify that. And then, um, Later in the month, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do where I do all the circles at one time, trim all of them at one time, flip all of them at one time, applique them all at one time, and then Jordan will show it in a sped up video. Thank you to the Bethola. She says, finally authors you on a live. How you show us the way you do your things. Oh, it's probably a typo. Thank you, though. Yeah, I try to... Now, obviously, I do think you should watch Lori's um, video also because she does it a little bit different than me. You know, she does glue. And really, I always encourage you when you're quilting, whatever method works for you is what you should do because you will enjoy the process better. Okay. I wish you would include sewing on the designer mystery. Well, the issue with designer mystery is it always sells out. And... We kind of are at a max of cutting. We can't really cut anymore. So if it doesn't sell out this year, I can do that. Isn't it on point? I don't know. It should be on point. Maybe I did it wrong. Hold on. Okay, so it is. It's on point. Yes, thank you. Who do I think has the pointiest, sharpiest pins? Little House has the sharpest, thinnest pins. Um, I think it's about the ball, the ballpoint or the, okay. I wanna make sure it's flat on the front, flat on the back. I think that's enough pins. Okay, now, at this point, you can do two things. You can either hand sew this down, which is what I did here. And you cannot see my stitches because I used a tiny, tiny needle. I don't want to do that. It's going to take too much time. So what I'm going to do with this block is I'm going to perfect the stitch length and how I think it should look because this is like a test block. I'll turn it into something later. But when you're working on something like this, you can't just start stitching because if you start stitching, you have three layers, front, interfacing, back. Your stitches are gonna be smaller than when you're normally stitching. So you have to increase your um, stitch length. So I'm gonna play around on this one before we move to this one. And if I didn't have a practice block, what I would do is I would put three layers together to test my stitches. Now, when you start with applique, you wanna hold this thread right here. I'm gonna put my foot right there and I'm just gonna do like two and a half and see how that looks. It looks okay. Let me see. Do you think it's too big? I think it looks good. Denise says she thinks it looks good. I think it's a little. Mm. 
I'm gonna try one. I'm gonna try one size up and one size down. And on this one, I can just pull these stitches out later. Okay, let me just, I'm just going to try a couple. So I did three bigger, smaller, smaller. Let me look at it in, in the light. So I did bigger, medium, I like the bigger. So I think I'm gonna do 3.0. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna do 3.0. And just hold this piece. Now, I am gonna start at the bottom of the block. It really doesn't matter where you start, but you do have to cover your stitches or back stitch one of the two. I'm just gonna start stitching and cover my stitches when I get to the back. Now. I'm not gonna be talking when I'm stitching, but I am gonna be doing my hand motion that I talked about. And I'm gonna be going slow. I'm going to talk about the stitch I'm using after I'm done. When I get to the end, I'm going to hold this, I'm going to clip this previous strand so I don't stitch over it and make an ugly stitch. Now I'm going to show you the difference in hand stitch. We're going to zoom in. I'm going to show you the difference in a hand stitch look and a straight stitch. So for the hand stitch, it's hidden. And the top stitch I just did, I put the foot. Let me take the foot off the machine and show you what I did. I used the foot as a guide and I put right here this little thing on the edge of the fabric and use that as a guide. So that is how I got to this measurement right here was just by using the foot as a guide. Now 
I don't think when it's quilted you're gonna notice the difference. I think the I think this actually looks good. So um, I'm glad I did that. Now there's lots of things you can do with this. There's a lot of ways you can stitch this. You can stitch this with a buttonhole or blanket stitch. You could stitch this by hand with a buttonhole or blanket stitch. You could do a zigzag stitch. You could do any stitch you want to do. For me, I'm not great at applique. I'm not experienced at applique, so I'd rather do a straight line because I know with my level of expertise and experience, it's gonna look better. My work is gonna look better with a straight line because I know I can do a straight line. Say, so, now I wanna talk a little bit about the on point also. Lori designed this where you make the block and when you put it on here, it becomes on point if you line up these corners. That's how she designed it. They're all different size blocks, so you cannot put them together straight. Okay, now I need to make sure I get all of these out. And I'm going to iron it one time before I trim it. I'm going to iron on the back. Really doesn't matter, I don't think. Now, not only could you use different stitches, you could use colored threads. And Lori has a lot of colored thread boxes in 50 weight, and she also has R floss. So this is some something you can just make it your own. You could also um, just look at maybe Lori Holt Mercantile hashtag and see what other people are doing with their stitches and just do what um, you're most comfortable with. So now that we have this, I had told you I made these a lot bigger. You trim it down to 14 and a half inch square. So this makes it really easy because it's a four patch. Okay, so I've got that lined up, that lined up, that lined up, and that lined up. And you can see I have a lot extra. That's because I did my four patches bigger. Now I'm gonna trim. And this is where I do cut toward myself because I don't like to move blocks that are big like this once I start cutting, if I do this correctly. Actually, I'm just going to turn it because it's already kind of moved. Okay. And I'm trying to do it where you can see. So I'm really lining up this edge really good. Ignore my gray hairs and my thinning hair. So here's my block. Now, there's so much personality you can do with this by changing the thread color, the stitch, the whatever. You also could trim it to a different size. You could make this way big and trim it down to 16 and a half, or you, know, you can trim it down to whatever you think is best. This one is actually 16 and a half because imagine that, my first one, I cut the wrong size. It's 16 and a half. It's not supposed to be 16 and a half. I was not paying attention. So there's a lot you can do. Um, so now I'm gonna answer questions before we go on to sew alongs. And I'm actually really happy about how this came out today. I'm actually really, I was a little bit nervous. Um, when I do things on camera that I'm not 100% used to, 
I get nervous. Now, one thing, one big, 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 big tip. Before I leave this room today, I'm gonna go to my Juki. I'm gonna take a photo of exactly where my stitch length is. Save it in my camera roll because I might not get back to this for a week or two and I can't remember what I did five minutes ago. And if I save that photo, basically I'll save the photo with the stitch length and then I'll save a photo taking a picture of the block and then I can always go back and know so that all of my stitch lengths can stay the same with each um, of these blocks. Um, is this where if you want to you can use colored threads? Yes, Pamela, you can, yes. Will I show more of my weekend sewing and cross stitch home? Love seeing you all the time. Love your DIY finishing cross stitch. Yes, we will. Why did you block the square instead of just using a larger piece of fabric? Seems like extra steps. Uh, okay, so so why I did that is that's how Lori wrote it, but also I do it larger just in case I make a mistake. It just gives me a little bit more room. Um, it's just kind of something I do. Um, let's see. 16 and a half would make a pillow. Yeah, and I still have this one. So I gotta, I, I'm just gonna pick out the stitches. And when I pick them out, I'll pick them out from the back. And then I could um, have it quilted and then um, put it into a pillow. Maybe we can have Teresa do that. Um, but we'll have to pick the stitches out. Um, my stitch length I used was 3.0. You don't have to do that, but like I said, do whatever you think looks best. Um, I think it looks really good. And I, the color of RFL I use is color 2000. That's actually the color I use for everything. And it works beautifully with this mercantile. I mean, it just totally blends in. So I kind of got lucky in that I didn't have to, I keep a tray of other RFL colors. <laughs> So, um, and they're mostly like different versions or different levels of white to cream. And I only use one gray. That's the color. I only use 2600. So I have a couple of different whites in here so that if I needed to change when I did that test piece, I would have changed. Do I cut the excess layers under the applique? No. So let's show this on the back. I leave it just like that. And it's, you know, it's going to be thicker. And if you, you could do a smaller batting if you wanted, but I love it. I think it just adds texture. And there you go. Okay, so now we're going to move into details on quilt alongs. Give us a second to kind of clean up all the mess I just made, but I'm so happy with my block. Just give us a second. Uh, no. Okay. So the next part of the show we actually added because we had so many questions last week and I wanted to just take some time to go in detail about all the, not all, but most of the upcoming quilt alongs, give you dates, give you info and give you information on how you can do this out of your scraps if you want. You don't have to buy anything. When we're doing these quilt alongs, I always encourage you to um, pull from your stash if you can. So the piece and quilt sampler uses the piece and quilt sampler quilt that is in this book, Celebrate with Quilts, that's authored by Susan Aki and Lisa Alexander. This came out last summer. So you have to have the book to be able to make this. Now, you can use your stash, and if you use your stash, you need at least 45 fat quarters, four and seven eighths yards of your background, one and seven eighths of your outer border, seven eighths yard binding, and five and five eighths yard backing. Now you can download this for free from Fat Quarter Shop. Just search piece and quilt sampler. In that layout, 
it gives you the quilt picture, the dates for the sew along, and we just added this this week. This is pictures of the block. Now I'm gonna tell you, this is a starter kit. And with the starter kit, I did have to make some adjustments to the blocks that I am gonna show you in a second. And huge shout out to Sarah Price who colored all of this because that is the hardest part of it. But if you want to make yours just like this, this is exactly what she did here. If you want to make this exactly like this, you will need to buy a couple of fabrics extra just because once we, um, once I sewed it, I realized. It's mainly the gray dot. So if you downloaded these two pages previously, we just added this yesterday for you. So we wanted to make it as easy as possible if you're using our starter kit to follow along. Now what's great about this, we made the starter kit, this is what I used. Now I'm gonna tell you a couple things I forgot. When I started sewing, I did forget to cut my inner border that's right here, length of fabric. So don't forget to do that because I don't like to piece my borders. I, um, actually I didn't, Teresa starched all of my fabric. I cut all of my blocks on Monday, I think, or Monday or Tuesday of this week. I cut everything. I'm gonna show you that in a video later in the month. Jordan's gonna edit it or Sophie or Ashley's gonna edit it and then we'll put it live. And it will show you behind the scenes of how I mass cut things. And I'm gonna kind of show you that, but let's talk about the details on this. You, uh, you definitely need 45 fat quarters and the fabric I just read. We do have this, which is called the Piece and Quilt Sampler Starter Fabric Kit. Once this is gone, I can tell you there will not be more because several of the SKUs have sold out, but we have a ton of kits. I don't know how long they will last. So this is one option, buy a kit. That's an option. With that kit does come this beautiful um, thing. Now, if you want to do more like this, Lisa put together this bundle for us. It's called Lisa's Celebrate with Quilts Starter Bundle. So she curated and picked SKUs from a bunch of Moda collections and a bunch of Moda designers, and this would give you the fat quarters you need for this. You would pick your own background and borders, et cetera. So this is one, this is a second option you can do. I'm gonna show them to you all together at the end. A third option, Susan Aki put together this bundle. It's more of a bright bundle. This is called Susan Celebrate with Quilts Starter Bundle. That's your third option. Your fourth option is to go in your stash, in your closet right now and pull fabrics. You do not have to buy anything. This is all you need. So don't feel like you have to buy something. The only thing you really have to buy is the book. So this is the Celebrate with Quilts book by Lisa Alexander and Susan Aki, and I'm gonna show you the fabrics together. And then I'm gonna talk about some notions also. So this is Susan's bundle. This is Lisa's bundle. And in that book, the book is scrappy. The book is from their stash. The book is not from a collection. That's what they do is they curate their own. And then this is the Shoreline Piece and Quilt Sampler Kit using all of the Shoreline um, fabrics. And there are some Bella Solids in here also. So those are your options. It, the event is from March 2024 to February 2025. That printout I just showed you has the dates. The quilt finishes at 71 by 92. It's definitely intermediate, and we do have this, which is the Piece and Quilt Sampler Foundation Notion Set. We only put these together because some people want all the paper. The book is not written for the paper. You do not have to buy this. Do not feel like you have to buy this. With that book, you can make it without this. This is what I use. This is what I do. You don't have to. 
and I'm gonna show you how I cut all my fabrics all at once. If you buy the kit, what do I need to add? I will answer that in a second. So I'm gonna start showing the blocks and I'm gonna show you the first stack is the blocks that I cut and I didn't need to make any changes. So what I did is you could print out that sheet I just gave you from the site and I cut everything. So I take this, I go to the page, the page number, I don't, I don't know if the page number is on that thing, but it's fine. Um, and I, this is hourglass blocks, like, um, square to square paper. So you see, I just put the block and everything and you can just see how I cut. So I've got, this is going to be step one, cutting everything. My step two is going to be, I'm going to do all my half square triangles at one time. My third step is I'm going to do like all my flying geese at one time. Then I'll do all my hourglass at one time. And then I will just have a bunch of units that I just sew together. And I did all of this. It took me uh, six hours. And one thing I will tell you is when I do this, sometimes when I go back, I'll have a mistake or I'll miss cutting background squares. It's never perfect doing it this way. It's a little bit less accurate, but that's okay. And the reason this picture that I'm showing you here is a little bit different is this was done before we did the other sheet. Um, I'm using Lisa's starter pack is their coloring sheet. There is not a coloring sheet for that. On a scale of one to 10 being most difficult, what level is this quilt? I would say a six. And so I've got all my triangle papers here. And so all of these blocks I'm showing you now, I didn't have to make any changes to. I'm going to be showing you some behind the scenes videos of me doing this in a fast forward motion. If we need to, I can do like one or two blocks, but not all of them. Now this is the one that took the longest to cut. And this one has um, the flying geese paper with all the background on it. And then my flying geese pieces over here. So this one took quite a bit of time. I am using the shoreline fabric. I am using the piece and quilt starter fabric kit. It does not come with the book, so you have to get the book separately. So I just kind of, and I used um, the, the storyboards, design boards I use, I just use whatever I had in the room. I don't, there's not a reason why I put some on big and some on small, I just use what I have. This one I'm gonna strip piece so these are all just uh, cut a little bit bigger and then I'll trim them down as I go. But there's not really a method of why I use some boards that are bigger and some that are smaller. I mean, obviously if it's a big board, I might use a bigger board, but sometimes I run out of boards. And um, for the triangle paper, you just have to use the size needed and you just look at the finished size. And we do have a chart that's free on our site called half, Quart, half Square Triangle Cheat Sheet. And you could use that and correspond with the book. This one, um, I don't know what I did there. I ran out of pins, which is why that's like that. This one I started running out of boards, so I have two on one board. So like this is one book block, this is another. This is two blocks. This, this block goes here and this block goes here. And there is a coloring sheet that I will show you in a little bit that you can use to color yours. And then these are gonna be strip piece, so I already have them right sides together. So I just make the pattern work for how I piece. 
you can either cut it exactly like the pattern is written or figure out how to strip piece it together how to use triangle paper i'm going to show you some cheat sheets that will help you with that but you just make it um your own way so these are all i use the kit the next part i'm going to show you i use the kit i changed the fabrics so i didn't buy anything additional i just changed the placement now, this one, for these outside, I'm changing that to this. And this gray dot, I'm changing to this. So if you need to buy extra fabric, you would need extra of the gray dot and this skew right here. But to me, it's, gonna, it's not going to matter. It's going to look the same. You also would need to more, buy more of the gray floral, but I don't want to buy more. I'm using this fabric. This wasn't used. I'm using this one. It'll look totally fine. So I just made this work. This one is cut normal. This one I'm changing. The only thing I'm changing is the flying geese right here are going to be this fabric. The reason why is I like to do the Eleanor Burns flying geese method and you need big squares. You probably could have made it work with this using small squares. I just prefer to do this. So you would need that, that fabric. So the gray floral, and then this one, the gray dot. I ran out of the gray dot, but I'm going to just use, I'm, I cut more of these. So again, if you wanna order extra fabric, you can. I'm not because I don't feel like it's necessary to. I think you just change it to make it work. But if you wanna make it exactly how Sarah drew it, you need the gray dot, this green sprig, gray floral, and this blue sprig. So, but I would not recommend buying extra. I would recommend changing it. So that's what I cut. Those are all the blocks. Then, I am doing my inner border just like Sarah. And she only used blues and grays. So I used all of those. The only thing, and I'm not using triangle paper. And the reason why, it's a weird size. So there's no reason to use triangle paper. I will do a video where I just sit and do all these half square triangles. And we're going to do it where it's going to be really fun, where I say, ready, set, go. Cut them all. Iron them all trim them all and tell you how fast I can get all these done. Now, one thing is I cut extra. I'm going to do something extra with the extras. I'm just going to make all of them figure out. I, you need 140 for the outside. I made way more than that. So I'm going to just put some of those on the back and, um, do whatever. So, and then these are just squares and I have all of these face up already. Now that I just messed that one up, they're all face up. So I don't have to worry about that. So that's all cut. And then I'm going to show you some other things that I did when I was in my sewing room. So in my sewing room, I had this, I have notes on it. This is me and my OCD. Has my due dates, and guess what? When I sew, I'm gonna check them off. That's just the way I do things. This will be in my binder, actually. And as I go, I will be checking things off so that I can stay on top. I have to have things like this. This is totally unnecessary for most people. It's the way my mind works. Now, this is what I showed you earlier, the fabric requirements and the dates. There's your coloring sheet. So if you want to color it, you can. Now these stay permanently on this clipboard in every sewing room I have. This is a flying geese cheat sheet. There's actually four, four pages to this. Page three is the only one I use because if I'm using the first method, which is the normal method, I have that memorized. And if you're using the flying geese paper, I just read the paper. This is for the Eleanor Burns method. And so this is always in there. I can always get to it. I always have the cheater on point in case I need to put something on point. That goes with that. 
and then this is hourglass and then there's one more that's for triangle paper I don't put it on here because I have it memorized but we have all of these cheat seat we have all of these cheat sheets on our site to help you okay now I'm going to answer questions on this so along before we move to the next one and I'm going to get my drink real quick hold on The piece and quilt said starter kit because when Sarah drew this, she did not draw out every single fat quarter to make sure you could cut it from that. And that's why those last four blocks that I showed you, I substituted fabric. So it's a starter kit. If you want to make it exactly like that, you might need, you're going to use more or less. Would love you to do a tutorial on the wagon tracks block. What is that? Oh, let me see the book, please. Let me look at it and see what it is. Let's see. You can do it. Now, Denise has to schedule that in. That takes a while. We won't know the exact date, but I can do that and I'll do it my way, which is strip piecing. I would really like Kimberly to take a pattern with flying geese and show the Eleanor Burns method. Perfect. Denise can schedule that at some point. Kids are shipping now for, for a piece and quilt. With all of your cutting, do you use one blade or multiple? Do I use titanium or regular? Okay, so with this batch, I only used one blade and I do use the endurance blades. Um, sometimes I have to use two. I will say my blade is dull, so when I get to trimming my blocks and cutting my paper, I will need to change blades. So I would say for a quilt this size, I'll probably go through three or four blades. Terry says she can't wait to see it all done. Maybe you could show us how you choose your long arm stitching on this and why you chose your design. Okay. Ice T, where is Jordan to scare her? I didn't know that he even posted that dang video until, and then I showed it to Kevin and he was like, oh my God, that's so funny. And then he was giving me prank ideas to get back at him. And I was like, I don't know. I'm kind of the boss. I don't know if I can get away with that and not get in trouble, but he had all these ideas and I was like, okay, we should not, I should not have started that with Kevin because then he's going to start pranking me at home. You want to substitute blocks. Is that okay? Of course that Lisa and Susan would actually love that because that's the whole point of, um, of it. So that is piece and piece and quilt. I'm going to be done with that one. So I don't get all these confused. We're going to move to peaceful baskets, which is a different sew along. Now this one, I'm not sewing along, but we're going to show you the blocks. Teresa will be making them. Peaceful Baskets is our new sew sampler block card. The idea did come from Kenna, who is new to the It's So Emma team. She was on customer service, so shout out to Kenna for this idea. No one has seen this before. This is block one. It has not even gone to customers. So in the sew sampler box from April, from April 2024 to March 2025, each month you get a block card. It is to make this quilt. The quilt kit will not be available until next week, but that quilt kit will include the finishing pattern and the shoreline fabrics to make the top and the binding. The patterns come in the sew sampler box. If you're not a sew sampler member, those patterns go online after the box ships, so you could also do it. This kit is completely different from the piece and quilt sampler. Totally different, it just happens to be the same fabric collection. I can tell you that this design is super unique and I can tell you that this um, 
will not look like any other quilt you have done. The baskets is the theme. There will be consistency between the blocks and changes within the blocks. That's the best kit. I, that's the best hint I can give you. I do not know if the Sew Sampler quilt will sell out. I know that we have a lot of notifications, but we are cutting a lot of them. I don't know how to predict what would sell out and not because if I did, I would never sell out of anything and I would sell the exact amount that I could. So um, this is Peaceful Baskets, 66 by 86 quilt kits include the finishing, not the block patterns. Hopefully I covered everything. So that is starting soon. And the only reason we're even giving you a sneak peek is we've had so many questions that I wanted to have a place where people could come. And I think it's kind of cool to see it all sewn up and Teresa sews amazing. Okay, another sew along that is coming up. We've gone over it, but it's been quite a while. It's the Quilty Fun sew along. So I have been blessed to be able to publish books for Lori Holt for 10 years. And to celebrate, this is her first book published 10 years ago. So we're going to do a uh, sew along and I'm sewing it. I'm going to show you some of my blocks. Now, this one is curated by Lori Holt. Lori handpicked every single fabric with Sarah. And this kit is not a starter kit. This is a full kit. So this one you can make exactly like it's covered. It's going to run from April 2024 to March 2025. All you have to do is have the book and fabric. You do not have to buy this kit. You can use your stash. And you don't have to buy anything. This is a mix of lots of Lori's fabric collections. So it's got um, basics, prim, prairie, calico, be ginghams. You know, it's got all different collections. The sew sampler is only one colorway. We always do one colorway each year. We don't do more than one. The fabric will not be in the sew sampler box. That's just a totally separate, um, it's kind of something we started years ago and it kind of took off last year and got kind of crazy popular. Now, a lot of you might already have your favorite designer's fabrics in your stash. Use that for the sew along. Don't feel like you have to buy the kit. We do the kit because some of you want to make it exactly like Lori. So we try to make it easy so you can make it exactly like Lori, but you do not have to. And then she's put some of the confetti solids in here. This is um, C745 Pewter, I believe. Nope, C747 Pebble. And then these are for inner border and outer border. So this is the Quilty Fun row along. So for that, you just need the book and some fabric. Your schedule and your fabric requirements are available free at Fat Quarter Shop. You just go to search this, it'll come up. I can give you a tease of some of the blocks I've made. And I use the kit. So this is one of the rows. Now you're gonna see, I kinda did the easy ones first. So I have a couple of rows done. I have four done so far. This row is just all scrappy. This one I didn't like look and see exactly where Lori placed the fabric. I just did this scrappy. And in fact, when I did these, uh, I had Will lay them out. So he laid them out and then I would sew them together and then he would put them back together and then we would just try not to touch yellows or the same print. The um, place to download the fabric sheet
just search um, whatever sew along you're looking for and then download the fabric requirements. Sometimes we add those after just because if we add them too soon, if a fabric doesn't come and we can't get a fabric, we have to change it. So we kind of add those when they're final. Now this one, I also did scrappy. I did not look exactly where she placed them. And I did the Eleanor Burns method on this. And then the butterflies. Now on the butterflies, I did exactly how she had it, if that makes sense. So some of the rows I will do exactly the way she has it, some of them I won't. So hopefully you can join along with us. It's 11 months and so really fun. And I have this quilt already, but I need another one. Like, you know, I made this 10 years ago. So making it again is fun. It's 68 by 86. So this is an upcoming sew along and all of these are kind of starting around the same time. We don't plan that, it just sometimes happens because things just in the universe seem to work that way. It could definitely be done with Lori Holt's Fat Quarter Club. That is a brilliant idea. That is a great idea. Is there enough fabric in the starter bundle for piece and quilt to use triangles on a roll and other foundation paper? Yes, because that's what I did. I started with that kit. The only thing I had to change were those last four blocks I showed you. Does the kit include the block fabric and finishing for sew sampler? Yes, the only thing it does not include is your block patterns. It does include binding. There is going to be a backing set that's also available. Priscilla wants to know if I use the foot pedal that came with my Juki or did you get a special foot pedal? I use the one that came with it. Okay, another, okay, this one's gonna be fun to show you. This is the first time anybody's seen it. Lori hasn't even seen it yet. It just came back yesterday. Or two days ago. Da, 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 da. The Quilted Scarecrow! And, um, obviously he does not have eyes yet. He does not have binding yet. He is not completely done. And then I'm gonna show it to you on the table. So this is kind of a behind the scenes, how things work with books and things like that. So basically, this is gonna be hanging at the H&H &H show that's gonna be in Chicago. Um, so we just got this done. Thank you to Teresa who sewed this. This is the quilted scarecrow pattern. The pattern is available in paper and PDF and it came out this week. But if you are waiting for the quilt kit, do not buy this pattern because the pattern is gonna come in the quilt kit. The quilt kit will not ship for like another couple weeks. It might be a month, might be a month and a half. The fabric is not even here yet. We made this with sample fabric. So just um, so you know, this is the binding, so it's not done. The eyes are not done. It's not all the way done. So Jordan's gonna kind of pull it and then we'll look at both the left side and the right side. This is going to be a sew along that's gonna go from like May 2024 to April 2025. I will be sewing with it for sure. We have not released our full schedule like I've shown you on other ones because we have to wait until we cut the kit. So that isn't online yet, but it will be. We wait. Strawberry Garden. Now this one's a little different. Strawberry Garden. This just came from the printer yesterday. I'm so excited. This is Strawberry Garden by Joanna of Fig Tree Quilts. I'm going to flip through it and show you how beautiful it is. Sorry, I think I hit the, it's so awesome. It's published by It's so Emma, designed by Joanna. And then I wanna go through this as a sew along and tell you there are companion projects also. The sew along is gonna be the main. Well, actually we're gonna have two sew alongs actually. 
the sew along for the bow tie fancy. I'm gonna go in detail later, not today. I just was so excited about this book, I wanted to show you. Okay, we offered Strawberry Garden as the block of the month. Of course, it's sold out. I am going, I'm in that club, I signed up on time, I'm gonna sew it and you will be seeing my progress. If you did not get in on time, you will want to buy the Jelly and Jam Fat Quarter Bundle. That's for some of the blocks. You will also need some of the eyelet and linen cupboard collections. If you did not buy eyelet and linen cover that came out earlier in the year, there is a bundle that's called Strawberry Garden Companion Fat Quarter Bundle. And if you put this bundle that is in stock, this bundle that's going to be in stock in a month or two, and then buy some background, you can make this. If you missed out on the block of the month, but we sold a lot of the block of the month, so I'm really kind of feeling like a lot of you already are in the block of the month. We do not have any more spots, but this is why I'm showing you this. Now, this one, what we're, it's 60 by 70. I'm going to be sewing this like when the block of the month ships. I'm going to take it. Teresa will starch it for me and I'm going to sew it. We might add some of that to my sew with me. So each month we do a sew with me series and that's where I just take something I'm already sewing, sew it. You guys just gave us a couple of ideas for other ones, um, but we might add this, we might not. We kind of do our schedule about three months out, if that makes sense. So we fit it in when we can, but I'm very excited. I am gonna make this. I'm not only gonna make this, I'm also gonna do the bow tie fancy quilt. She shows it sewn in two colorways. One is just scrappy and one is all green. So they're both scrappy. There are two sizes to this. I'm going to be doing this with the Jelly and Jam fabric and I will give you more information another day because we've already gone. Oh my gosh, it's 10.40. Okay, so let's see. I don't think we have any other questions. I'm gonna just go through the What's New page. Of course, you can keep asking questions. But um, Kate is asking, when I press open, do I use a true quarter inch? Yes, I do. I use a quarter inch seam. Okay, so huge shout out to Kelly on this. Kelly is new to our team. These are called Sewist Haberdashery Melamine Trays. You can buy them at Fat Quarter Shop individually or as a set. We have not bought something like this. Um, like we didn't, we bought them, but we don't have like a huge supply of them, if that makes sense. We wanna make sure they're gonna sell, but they are so cute and they're melamine and so they're, um, they're not gonna break, if that makes sense but they're also not gonna scratch. Um, they're not, anyway, these are awesome and they just came in and huge shout out to Kelly for finding them. I'm so excited for them. I'm gonna buy like five sets. I'm not even kidding. I'm gonna put them everywhere. I'm gonna put them everywhere. Kevin's gonna be like, can you please put those up? Okay, we have a quilt to show you. This is the AGF Quarterly Club. The quilt is called Evening Star. It's 68 inches square, designed by Angel, pieced by Michelle, no, pieced by Shelly, quilted by Joanna Marsh. This shipped to Art Gallery Fabrics Quarterly Club members on April 10th. If you sign up today, you will start with the July shipment. We have very few bundles that are left over they're just for the people that didn't pay. If you want to get that, you would just search AGF Quarterly Club March, April. And oh, that's, ooh, I do not like that. Ugly buggies, that's scary. So if, and if you sign up today, you can be in that club so you can get the next one. And we always show the Ruby Star, the Cave, and the Art Gallery Club uh, patterns. 
once they're sewn up. Okay, this one's bigger. This is Ruby Star Quarterly Club. How do you say it, Jordan? Quasar. Say it loud. Quasar. That's the name of it. I'm not saying it. 72 inches square, designed by Angel, pieced by Shelly, quilted by Joanna Marsh, shipped to club members of Ruby Star Quarterly, April 4th. If you sign up today, same thing. You will start with the July shipment. But we have a few April bundles left for people who did not pay. Those will probably be gone by tomorrow. The shipping months for both of these clubs I just showed you are January, April, July, and October. What is that? Push Pops. Push Pops. That's cute, Vacky. Okay, now I get to show you new fabric. This is y'all's favorite part, I think. Okay. I'm gonna show you new fabric. And the way we did this last week worked really good. So this is Hey Boo. Layla Boutique Moda Fabrics. This is the white on white. It has stars. We are selling this as a full bolt. We have half yard bundles. We have all the Moda pre-cuts. And I'm gonna show it to you. So this is the half yard bundle that we cut this week. This is a great Christmas. This is a great fall Halloween group. Sorry, once I get past an hour and a half, words start coming out and I just start fumbling around. This is so cute. I really like this collection. I'm not a Halloween person, but I am a pink person that says boo. So cute. So lots of options in this one. She has a lot of patterns too. So you can find those at Fat Quarter Shop. And we did get a question of how do we pick which collections we sell full bolts of, and we just do it based on experience, what we know has sold in the past. So, and again, this is the one that we have the full bolt of. The design is this on the white on white. So, Hey Boo, Layla Boutique, Moda Fabrics. Everything is in stock now. So we have the yardage, the bolts, the pre-cuts, the everything. This next one by Moda, we only have the pre-cuts so far. So I'm going to show you this. When the half yard comes, we're not going to show it again because we will have already shown it. This is Flirtation by Zen Chic for Moda Fabrics. The pre-cuts are here. The yardage will be here in a couple of weeks. Once the yardage is here, we will have a half yard bundle. So this one has a lot of colors. It goes purple, green, olive. I think the next color is blue. There's a couple versions of blue and then black. Again, flirtation, zen chic, moda. It's so funny because you guys love this part of the live stream the best. And I, I just really... I don't know. I didn't, I just am really shocked that you guys love this the best. I think, I mean, it is fun to just sit and look at fabrics. I guess I see so many fabrics that I'm just used to seeing it. So I've seen this so many times, like the joy is not as fresh as it was at one time. Okay, that one I want to save. I want to do that one in a little bit. There's one that I am going to go on and on about and I'm going to annoy some of you. So we're going to show it last so that I don't annoy everyone. Okay, so that is flirtation. Then we have Blue Escape Coastal Lisa Audit for Riley Blake Fabrics. This is your main print. And we don't normally buy coastal fabrics. So we're going to see how this does. If it does good, we can start adding more. 
Lisa Audit used to design fabric for Wilmington and now she is with Riley Blake. So Blue Escape, Lisa Audit, Riley Blake. Go to the other screen so I can see what people are saying. Okay. So yeah, this is the first time I've had seashells in a long time. This is that same print I opened earlier. Where do you find the new sheets for Peace and Quilt that Kimberly showed today? You search Peace and Quilt and it's a free download at Fat Quarter Shop. Amy DeMint is watching from Austin. Yay! Maybe I'll run into you someday. The Fat Quarter Bundle would be a good start to the Peaceful Basket, but it will not be the um, exactly what you need, but you can look at the fabric requirements. Now, Riley Blake just started doing, or not just started, about a year ago, a year or two ago, they started producing batiks. This is, ba can you say it, Jordan, to the camera so I don't have to say it? Bayou. Bayou Blues. There's some words that I don't say very good and I don't want to embarrass myself. Jordan knows all the words and all the definitions. We just ask him. He's like a he's like a walking dictionary and I'm not kidding <laughs> he literally is a walking dictionary we had to have a rule when we went to Nashville that he could not use big words because we didn't understand his big words so that is Bayou Blues Riley Blake Designs this one is Al. Albion, Albion Fat Quarter Bundle by Amy Smart for Riley Blake. This one's a really nice floral group. And I'm saving the best for last. Hopefully Kevin's not watching. I, I've actually banned him from watching because I don't, um, I don't like people who I really know in real life to watch me because it's just embarrassing. So um, I tell him he can't watch. And... Based on what I say, I will know if he has watched in a little bit. Because sometimes he does watch, and he, I see he slips up at dinner. Um, because Peyton, out of all my kids, Peyton watches. And he'll say, Peyton will say something, and then Kevin will say something. And I'm like, you know what? He must have watched my live stream. So pretty. So this one has a lot of colors. This would be really good in um, some of the scrappy designs. I might want to buy this. I might have to buy this one. Does Jordan love history? No, but he's very smart. He like knows a lot of random facts like Lake Titicaca. That's a behind the scenes story and it's hilarious. And now we're going to all start laughing. We're not going to tell the story online. But yes, he comes up with things and, and half the time we have to say, are you serious or are you joking? Anyway, this is Sophisticated Halloween by my mind's eye for Riley Blake. Now I'm making Denise laugh. But he comes up with random facts that we don't know where he came up with them and how he learned them. So this is the funniest story ever. Okay, I can't tell it. This one's really pretty. It's like a big... Uh, gothic type print. So many pretties. I'm so glad you guys like when I show these fabrics because I, when I started doing this, I thought you guys were not going to like it and think that I was just trying to sell you fabric. And that's not what I'm trying to do on this live stream. My goal on this live stream is to show you stuff so you can see it and make an educated decision before you buy it, but also to teach you how to sew. So this kind of, this whole segment came out of you guys' love for it. It was never meant to be a full segment. Okay, Star of Wonder, Star of Light 
by Nancy Halverson for Benner Text Fabrics. Oh my gosh, y'all are so funny. This is the best part. Okay, so this one is Christmas themed and I'm going to pull the fabrics where you can see them. And there's also a panel that I'll show you. Her fabrics um, tend to go together and we always buy anytime for Benetex, there's a Pat Sloan or a Nancy Halverson collection, we always buy them. Do they sell the Tittles sandals in Texas? I don't know what that is. We don't know what that is. Okay, let me make this pretty again. A font of indefinite facts. Okay, now I'm going to show you the next colorway. And we sort these and cut them according to light to dark so that when you get them, they're already sorted for you, the ones that we cut here. <laughs> Jordan, oh my gosh. I prefer the tutorials, but the fabric show is pretty. Well, I think it's fun to just look at pretty stuff. It's kind of like if you're like somebody who likes to travel, you watch a travel channel. You might not go there, but you want to see what's there. Piggy is, um, I think he's going to be eight this summer. And then I'm going to show you the panel. It's a 23 inch panel. And you could leave it like it is and just add a border or you could cut them up and make pillows or other things. Really, really pretty. Now we have a Maywood collection called All Our, All Our Hearts. Sorry, I'm, it's getting late and I start fumbling my words. So this one is definitely red, white, and blue, but the color of it to me does not read Americana. And sometimes if we buy groups that are colored Americana, but not themed Americana, they don't sell because they kind of get, people can only see it in one way, not the other, if that makes sense. This is all our hearts. And this is a creamier uh, base. It's not white. And I wanted to kind of go back and show you. Like this one, it's a little bit whiter but the rest is creamier. So it's definitely like, these are darker creams, lighter creams. And then this is the Heirloom Palette Picks Fat Quarter Bundle that's curated by Lo and Behold Stitchery for Robert Kaufman Fabrics. This has Essex Linen, Essex Yarn Dyes, and Kona Solids. So this one has a nice range of colors. This would make a great uh, Elizabeth Hartman quilt. And so this one, we have the bundle and then all of the yardage we do sell separately. 
but this is like a curated bundle by Lo and Behold Stitchery. Then we have an 1800s reproduction called Oxford by Mary Koval. Oxford is the city of Emma's second college choice. She's trying to, well, she's going to start applying in August, but she's got two choices. One I'm for, one I'm in the middle, but I don't tell her and she doesn't watch the live stream, so she doesn't know. So this is Oxford. So Ole Miss, a lot of kids from MS High School go to Ole Miss. Why they have picked that, I don't know. Compared to like just going to Arizona or, but anyway, a lot of kids go to Ole Miss. So she, oh, TC is her first pick. That will only happen if she can get enough scholarship money. And Ole Miss is if she doesn't get scholarship money. The white on white strawberry lemonade is coming back in in a month or two. We had to have that reprinted. This is Bright Summer Batiks by Jacqueline DeJong for Anthology Fabrics. And we don't sell Jacqueline's patterns, but what she's known for are these really intricate paper piece quilts that are like super intricate. Bright summer batiks. We have this in half yard bundles, fat quarter bundles, and yardage, and we cut these ourselves. Now this is going to be a basic by Art Gallery Studios. It's called Sparkle Elements. Anything that Art Gallery produces that has the name Elements in it means they are keeping, or they're making it, planning to make it as a basic. This fabric is not white, it's not cream, it's in between. I would consider it similar, it's definitely not a match, but it's similar to like color 97 of Moda that's like, it's like an in-between. So it could kind of work with whites or creams, if that makes sense. And I'm gonna talk about these a little bit in detail. Okay, so like this is more of a neutral. It's got blacks, browns. This is lighter blues, darker blues. This has more than one color. It's got gold, green, brown. This is just greens, just purples. This one has purples, greens. So they're all different. They're not all, I don't know how to explain that, but I would just click on them. My favorite, of course, is this one. Sparkle Elements Art Gallery. We have another red, white, and blue. This is Henry Glass Fabrics, Liberty Hill Fat Quarter Bundle, Liberty Hill Half Yard Bundle. We have this also in a Fat Quarter Bundle and yardage. The designer is Color Principle. And what we try to do is if we have a Half Yard Bundle, we'll show that because it's bigger pieces. Sometimes we, it, if you want to know a secret, if, if we think it's going to sell really well, we do a half yard bundle. If we're not sure, we'll do a back quarter bundle. Little secret. The Christmas Angel panel was called Star of Wonder, Star of Light. And I wanted to open these two. And then this one. I love to show these that are like this because you could like do a lot with them. You could do pillows. You know, there's a lot of stuff you could do.
Juliet by Angela Nikias of Wilmington Prints. The art gallery collection was Little Stars. And if you click on our website on one of the SKUs, you can click into it and then click the bigger image and it'll zoom in and you can see a bigger image. Do more people buy yardage or pre-cut bundles? Pre-cut bundles by far. I think they buy the pre-cut and then they come back for yardage later. The Lori Holt autumn seeds will be in uh, one or two months. Let me fix this. And I did want to give a shout out to Wilmington Fabrics. They have a lot of free patterns on their site. If you're, and they have a lot of panel patterns, which I'm going to be showing a panel in a second. This kind of reminds me of like the 70s, even though it's not even the 70s colors. Okay, Juliet. Haunted House by Timeless Treasures Fabrics. Now, one thing I could talk about since we're in April. So, Halloween and Christmas start shipping in April. They ship a lot in May, so you're gonna see a ton of holiday in May, some in June. So a little April, a little June, a lot May. May is really heavy on the holiday fabrics and that's just how the fabric companies have set that up for whatever reason. So by Christmas, your Christmas is gonna be sold out. By Halloween, your Halloween is gonna be sold out. The one holiday that I wish was different is Valentine's Day comes out in November. And that doesn't give us enough time to sell it. So I wish Valentine came out more in September. And this one is so cute. I promise I'm going to keep it together. Look how cute that is. So this is Haunted House. I am going to be doing more scrap bags. We do those as we have enough to do them. Okay, now this is my dun -da -da -da, wait till the last minute to show you. Okay, this is Smokey Bear. Kevin loves Smokey Bear. He has a Smokey Bear from when he was little. There's nothing Kevin Jolly loves more than Smokey the Bear, and I'm not kidding. Like, it is a big deal to Kevin. Now, this doesn't really look like the Smokey Bear that Kevin had, but I'm going to make him a quilt. This came to my order came yesterday I have the fat quarter bundle and I have the panel this is a free pattern we're not kidding this this is just a free pattern on Riley Blake's site well let me let me not mess this one up I'm so excited about the Smokey the Bear so I don't know what I'm gonna do I I do know I'm gonna use the panel and all of this is the panel I'm gonna show it to you in a second I'm definitely not doing the Christmas trees but I think I'm going to do this and then do patchwork throughout to the outside. I'm not sure. I definitely will show you what I make, but he doesn't know unless he's watching. And if he's watching, he's going to be busted because he's going to be so excited. He's not going to be able to contain himself. I'm not kidding either. I'm being dead serious. Like he, and I really think this one, I'm going to make a pillowcase. I'm going to show it to you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put that one right there. I'm trying to not mess it up for Denise and Jordan and Ashley and Sophie, sorry. But what I'm thinking, well, I have a lot of ideas. Okay, so kind of what I'm thinking is, doing, this is the, main pillowcase this is the little stripe in between focusing on the green and this is like the band and that new video that we just released on how to make a pillowcase 
and then just make it, put it on our bed, and then he's just gonna be like, what's that? And then make him a quilt. I'm gonna show you the panel. The panel is huge. Now, what I'm probably gonna do, let me have that bundle real quick, sorry. I'm gonna get so excited about this. What I'm probably gonna do, well, what I am gonna do, not what I'm probably gonna do, I just have to find time. But luckily, tomorrow's basketball is only in the morning. And it's right by work. So I told Christopher, I was like, oh my gosh, it's right by work. We can go to work in between the games. And he's just like, whatever. He's not going to any, he, he won't come here. He'll, he'll stay at the games. Okay, see these finish at three and a half. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna starch this. So when it starches, this is gonna change sizes. I'm gonna probably do a patchwork and just keep doing the patchwork all the way around and it will be so cool, but let me just show you. The first step will be, I like to draw things out. So my first step is to take this, I, mine is already at home, but take it and starch it. Let it dry, then I'm gonna take the measurement from the outside. And then I'm gonna sit and I'm gonna draw and I'm just gonna think about it. But what I could do is like, if you're looking at like this, this is right here. These are the same prints. They look a little different because this one's digitally printed and this one's not. So, I don't know what I'm gonna do. And what I, what I might do is I might add a stop border. I consider this like a stop border. So I might get, um, I might need to do that before I leave today. Some type of solid, like probably a black, and then do something fun on the outside. So you guys can comment and let me know what you think. For our giveaway, I'm gonna show you what our giveaway is. It's gonna be a really good giveaway. Really excited about this giveaway. Thank you so much for watching. It's been two hours of nonstop Kimberly talk, so I apologize for taking so long. But our giveaway is gonna be to three people, a set of these. So cute. I'm so excited. But what you have to do is you have to comment and tell Jordan what fun fact you know. And then we can come back on another live stream and gather the fun facts. And that will be so fun. So that's going to be something that we're going to do. It will add some like, I don't know, something different to the live stream. But we can do like a read along of the fun facts. So um, Ashley will pick the winners. Friday, April 19th, you have until April 18th to enter. I hope all of you guys have a, what? Oh, haha, -ha, sorry. Okay, I got so carried away. Okay, so I know we have a lot of Tula Pink fans. Jocelyn and Nova have been working behind the scenes for months on something. It is going to be using Tula Pink fabrics. It is going to be paper pieced. It's going to be only available at Fat Quarter Shop. And it's going to be Tula Pink and it is going to come out next Wednesday. We have been working on this for so long and if you want to see what it is, next Wednesday by 10 a.m. Central Time, it will be online. So we're excited to show you that. Um, I'm actually going to make it, and it's modern. And so for me to make it means that it will appeal to more than, um, more than just modern consumers, if that makes sense, because I only sew what I love. If I don't love something, I'm not sewing it. It's not worth it. But um, back to the giveaway. Comment a fun fact you know. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you next week. Bye.